Now for what's probably the coolest machine of the whole bunch, as if there was an uncool PS2, which I don't think there is. This is the IBM PS2 L40SX, and this is actually the first PS2 clamshell laptop. All of the other ones came later, such as the early ThinkPad 700, the N51, and the CL57SX, all of which had a much more compact form factor. But this machine, unlike the P70 and P75, is capable of operating on battery power, uses a grayscale LCD screen with brightness and contrast adjustments, and it has a compact keyboard. Now the, P the uh, L40 was designed for use on the road, and as such, normally it's just a very basic machine, but there were some accessories that came with it, or that you could get, such as an outboard numeric keypad. If you had an application that demanded a keyboard, a, a mouse in addition to your numeric keypad, the keypad has a pass-through on it for the mouse. You can use any PS2 mouse that you would like, but IBM sold a convertible trackball and mouse combined into one. It's a very neat device. I have one, but I couldn't find it for this video. Anyway, the L40 is driven by an Intel 386SX microprocessor clocked at 20 megahertz. There are rumors that at one point in time, a company would take your L40 in and replace the microprocessor with a Cyrix 486 SLC processor, or 486 SRX more correctly, which would increase the clock speed more than anything else because the 386SX was kind of a hampered design with a 32-bit internal processor core and a 16-bit and 24-bit combined external bus to talk with the outside world. So although it could run 32-bit software like a 386 could, if it was, in, if it was running 32-bit software, it would have to perform 32-bit work across two 16-bit cycles, which oftentimes slowed it down. But for a portable like this, where battery life was pre preferred over raw performance, it really wasn't a problem. There is a socket inside this machine to add a 387 math coprocessor, something that I have done. But perhaps the rarest thing of all with regard to this machine are the memory modules. This thing has two megabytes of memory on the system board and two SIM sockets that can accept a four or eight megabyte module. You can only use one four megabyte module at a time, and IBM tells us that the modules are special low power types, although some success has been had in using desktop memory that's been converted to fit the odd nose in the socket. But this machine, I managed to find two of the extremely rare six, eight, 8 megabyte modules and I installed them in this machine. Now being a 386SX, that means that it can only address about 16 megabytes of memory tops. So the 2 megabytes of memory on the board are disabled. But IBM shipped a special driver with these machines right there it is loading, that lets you access that two megabytes of memory using the expanded memory or EMS specification. EMS is basically a windowing trick that lets you access memory outside of the processor's normal ability to address it. The idea is that you can have a greater amount of memory out there, say two megabytes, such as in the case of this machine, and by using a small, like a 64 kilobyte window, in the machine's normal memory addressing space, you can pass things through that window out to the expanded memory. It's really not very useful. Windows doesn't get along with the driver at all, and I don't have any DOS software that makes a lot of use of EMS, so I really haven't been able to use that to its maximum advantage. But the machine does run Windows and will run Windows very well. In fact, I have actually used a parallel port Ethernet adapter and a 16-bit version of Internet Explorer for Windows to go online with this machine, something that, you know, it went slowly, as most things do, but it definitely did work, and it was kind of a cool experience to have. As it is, this machine is very nice to use outdoors. The, uh, the LCD display is pretty easily readable outside, and I do have a remanufactured functional battery pack for this machine, although I haven't used it in a while and don't know where it is right now. 
The power management, IBM provided a number of utilities to let you turn things on and off, like the parallel and serial ports, as well as the integral modem on this machine. There's also an automatic and manual switch that allows you to configure how power management is done. The status indicators underneath the display are kind of cool because normally they show in black. But when you activate one of them, for example, here's the caps lock key, the shutter, so to speak, lifts up and shows you the indication behind it. There's an indication for temperature, battery life, speaker volume, num caps and scroll lock, and of course, I think I already said it, battery life. But the L40 is quite a nifty little workhorse. And surprisingly, although it seems they cost about $14,000 new in a base configuration, there do seem to be quite a few of them around. L40 suffers from two problems. Killer capacitors, as in the P75, that leak on the main board. And also, people tend to break these little doors off. Now, this machine has been fully restored, so it has the little doors. But you may find one that does not. Now, like other PS2 models with model numbers lower than 50, the L40 is internally ISA bus based, so it doesn't use microchannel technology at all. IBM marketed a so-called breakout box that connects to this long connector that lets you use an ISA card, typically a communications card or something similar, like a, a 3270 adapter or something like that. These adapters are rarer than hen's teeth. In other words, pretty darn rare. So if you're looking for an L40 and you happen to see that card box adapter with it, don't pass that up and don't reject it. The other thing that this was used for was a special type of L40 that actually plugged onto a base known as the 5800 Personal Service Platform, I believe it was called. And that's an L40 that has more or less been permanently anchored to a base with a power supply and two ISA slots in it. I have one of these that I will be demonstrating, that I will be showing in this video as well. But that's pretty much all there is to know about the L40. It's a very nice little machine if you can find one. And although the keyboard again is no Model M, it still has a very nice touch to it and it can also be set to have an audible click through the PC speaker. This is an IBM L40 mounted to the 5800 PSP service platform from IBM. These appear to be extremely uncommon. And basically what this thing is, this is a power supply and there appear to be two ISA slots inside for expansion cards. There may also be a hard drive in this unit. And the L40 is more or less semi-permanently fastened to this device using little hooks that go through the front end. This is called a personal service platform, a portable service platform one. I know it's personal. Oh well, been a long time since I've looked at it. I don't know who all had these or was allowed to carry them, but I suspect that they were something that was only given out to IBM employees. And this is actually one that I'm caretaking, I guess you could say. I'm keeping an eye out for it until its original owner wants it back. But here you can see the connection between this long port in the back and this sliding device right here and it connects it to the bottom half of this assembly. You can also see that this door over here has been lost probably due to the sands of time. I don't know if there's a battery in this machine or not. These are why these doors break because they're kind of fiddly to work with. Turns out there is a battery in this machine although it's probably long since hopelessly dead. I don't know if this thing was capable of operating on the battery or not, but I kind of doubt it because it seems to me like asking the battery to power this entire expansion base would really be asking a lot of it. At the moment, this particular machine needs some help. It powers on and it'll work, but it gives the beep codes indicating a memory error. I was told that the power stinger for this machine, the power plug that plugs into the back, is in bad shape and probably wouldn't stand being handled too much, and also because I haven't figured out how to remove this machine from the base non-violently, or even if it can be removed from the base non-violently, I have not attempted to troubleshoot and fix the problem. But that is a 5800 Portable Service Platform 1. I also have whoops, the carrying case for the beast, which has several diskettes and things in it as well as some cables and connectors for the testing of IBM PS2 and PS2 related equipment. 